All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. As I recall last week, we were dealing with Paul's statement to the Ephesians, recorded in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. We didn't complete our study on that particular scope of Scripture. I thought we might cover that again and deal with some matters that I believe to be of primary importance. Paul said, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthily of the calling wherewith you were called, with all lowliness, with meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, giving diligence to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. For there is one body and one Spirit, even as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all, above all, and in you all. It's an interesting statement, actually. Now, we pointed out that Paul was indeed quite literally in prison at the time he penned this epistle uh, to the church in Ephesus, possibly in 62 A.D. <clears throat> and his reason for the imprisonment is his fidelity to the Lord. That was not popular in that day, and such is not popular today. When you preach the truth in opposition to error, you're going to suffer a degree of persecution. Of course, we live in a land of enlightenment, when there is indeed the privilege of speaking one's peace, and each man has the right to express his own opinions and ideas, and we respect that right, and that's good. However, when it comes to truth, there is only one source, oh, and it says exactly the same thing to you that it says to me. And I realize in our broad-minded thinking today, uh, in our land of freedom of speech, it sounds rather narrow when one simply proclaims that which is written in the blood-sealed covenant of the Son of God. There is no tolerance. There is no variation. And there can be no concept that would suggest that, hey, you go your way and I'll go my way. No, 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 no. We must both go the Lord's way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me, John chapter 14 at verse 6. And all that he had to say relative to salvation, everything essential to my well-being spiritually is written in his blood-sealed covenant. The only source of instruction that we have from the Almighty is the written, revealed Word of God, so that every scripture inspired of God is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto every good work. And that doesn't admit of addition or subtraction or substitution. We simply teach what it says. Uh, Paul was in trouble for doing that. And we don't get into that degree of trouble for doing the same thing today, but it isn't popular. Now, sir, it doesn't appeal uh, to the masses. Hey, I think this, or I believe that, or friend, the truth is contained in God's Word. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. John 8, verse 32. Oh, but the Lord said in His prayer to the Father, Sanctify them in truth, thy word is truth. So Paul was in prison <clears throat> because of his fidelity to Jesus Christ. He is simply going to do what the Lord would have him do, in prison or out. It's interesting, isn't it, that when he was in prison, he taught his guard, he taught all that came his way, and later he sent greetings uh, from the household of Caesar. It is amazing. He converted many, many heathen, uh, even while he was chained to a guard, imprisoned uh, in Rome. So Paul, the prisoner of the Lord, begs us, I beseech you, therefore, brethren. Ah, oh, it's interesting how that men who love the souls of men are willing to beg, to beseech, 
to do whatever is essential to enable man to rise up to a point of attention to what the Lord has to say. It is so important. But you know on that thing of imprisonment, I think we pointed out that Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, about old verse 22, said that he that is called of the Lord, being a bondman, a slave, is the Lord's freed man. Oh, and he went on to explain, don't worry about your bondage. Don't bother about being free. No, no, use it, he said, rather. What is Paul actually saying here? No matter where you are, just as he, as a prisoner, chained to a guard, continued to teach the truth and converted many heathen under those circumstances, just so. Your fellow slaves need the truth that makes men free. After all, we're not physical beings in the physical world primarily. No, no. We are immortal spirits, and eternity lies before us. So what he's saying is, if you are physically in this uh, material realm a slave, use it. You don't worry about being free or bond or whatnot. You are the Lord's freed man, and so use this spiritual freedom to share the light of truth with others. Place it within the darkened hearts of humanity, no matter where you are. But he went on to say, he that is called of the Lord being free is the Lord's bondman. Uh, someone says that seems inconsistent. Oh, no, 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 no. You see, when we become children of God, when we make up our hearts and minds that we're going to walk in the illuminated pathway of the Son of God, uh, that's a commitment, friend, that binds you. Uh, it involves the entirety of one's life, thought, speech, conduct, relationships. Everything from that point on is to represent Jesus Christ. And you remember, and we've often said, that His purpose for coming, Hebrews 10 at verse 7, then said I, lo, I am come in the roll of the book that is written of me to do thy will, O God. That's the only reason that he came. Ah, physical things were of no importance. Oh, the foxes have holes, the birds of the heavens have nests, oh, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. Luke chapter 9 at verse 58. So that was not the important thing with the, nothing wrong with that. And of course, in this material world, we need certain material things. We ingest physical food. We drink water. We have responsibilities. We understand that. But you see, if you gain the whole world and lose your soul, miss the point. Miss the point. For what shall a man give in exchange for his life? Your eternal life. Friends, that's who you are. It is so important that I put the Lord first in my life. Give Him my allegiance. It is a matter of totality. It is a complete surrender. Uh, Lord, I was free to do anything I wanted to, to go where I pleased and do my thing and talk as I wanted to. And, uh, right. But now that I'm the Lord's bond man, uh, I am limited with regard to worldly matters. Oh, but that limitation provides totally my spiritual needs, and that's really who I am. So when I give my life to the Lord, there is a peace that passeth understanding that overflows the hearts of His servants. In Philippians 4 at verse 7, he makes that statement. It is amazing the freedom that we enjoy if we decide to become bondmen of Jesus Christ. He provides for that freedom. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, and His mercies are limitless. There is no question about that. Ah, oh, give diligence to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. How can we keep the unity of the Spirit? Well, this, of course, is the Spirit's uh, instruction. It is, of course, the words of Christ, but the apostles were inspired of the Holy Spirit to inerrantly record the Lord's will. Now, you recall that, John chapter 16, you remember? At verse, uh, well, what is it? Uh, verse 8, isn't it? Uh, but when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He shall guide you into all truth. Now, that's verse 13. Yes, indeedy. John chapter 16. Oh, but listen. He shall not speak from Himself, but whatsoever things he shall speak, shall hear, these shall he speak. He shall glorify me, for he shall take of mine, and shall declare it unto you. So the Holy Spirit was to guide the apostles 
into the sum total of divine truth. That's correct. <clears throat> John 16, verse 13. Oh, but that truth he shall not speak from himself, Jesus said. No, no. But whatsoever things he shall hear, these shall he speak. He shall glorify me, for he shall take of mine and shall declare it unto you. So then, every word in this blood seal covenant is the word, the teaching, the instruction of Jesus Christ. How then may we maintain, how can we keep the unity of the Spirit? Friends, we must speak as the Bible speaks. Be silent where the Bible is silent. We need to call Bible things by Bible names. Do Bible things and Bible ways. Oh, yes, the sum total of God's divine will. Oh, and it covers every area of human experience. For those who are willing to be the bond servants of Christ, or for those who want their hearts to be filled, uh, to overflowing with the love of God, and giving diligence. Ah, oh, friend, it is a commitment indeed. It is the sum total of one's responsibility when he gives himself in humble obedience to the Lord's will to represent him properly in this earth. You remember what Paul said to Timothy. He said, preach the word, 2 Timothy chapter 4, you recall. And he said, be urgent, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Why would that be true? Oh, he said, because the time will come when men will not endure sound, that's a healthful doctrine. Oh, but having itching ears will heap to themselves teachers after their own lusts. They'll turn away their ears from the truth and be turned aside unto fables. Be thou faithful in all things. Uh, suffer hardship. Uh, do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill thy ministry. Uh, through verse 5. That's why Paul was in prison. But despite the hardships that may, uh, must be endured, there is the responsibility for maintaining the unity of the Spirit. That is, we need to preach the same thing. Didn't Paul warn the church at Corinth in their divisive state? Uh, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, through the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfected in the same mind and in the same judgment. First Corinthians chapter 1, I believe you could begin about verse 10. It is so important that we speak the words of God, teach only the oracles of the Almighty. So important. And that's all written down. And so when we speak on a biblical subject, we say the same thing. Oh, somebody says, well, now, he didn't say don't do this or don't forget that. That's not faith. No, no. Faith cometh of hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Yes, but somebody says, preacher, that's too narrow. Enter ye in at the narrow gate, uh, you recall, in Matthew 7, uh, 13 and 14. Yes, it is limited, and especially in this world over which Satan is said to reign as God, this word seems very narrow. Oh, <laughs> it seems very, very limited. And uh, there are so many differing religious concepts today that when you teach only the truth of God in opposition to all this error, friend, you're going to suffer persecution. Oh, that's what Paul said, isn't it? 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12. Yea, and all who would live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Oh, there's no question about that. That's not uh, delightful. That's not to be desired. We don't like to be at variance with people, but that's beside the point. It is a matter of fidelity to the Almighty whose Son died to redeem my soul. So I cannot vary. I cannot add to or delete from. I cannot in any way substitute for God's divine instruction. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you, I beg you, to walk worthily of the calling wherewith you were called, giving diligence to keep the unity of the Spirit, now notice, in the bond of peace. In the bond of peace. That's, a, that's an interesting thing. I think we talked about that to some extent. Uh, many areas uh, that are matters of indifference. And yet over these, uh, occasionally the church is divided, and that's a shame and a disgrace, and it is a terrible sin when brethren are in opposition one to the other over things that actually 
is a matter of indifference. It doesn't matter whether you do it or you don't do it. As Paul explained in Romans chapter 14, uh, there are those who eat meat and there are those who do not eat meat. Uh, fine, you don't have to eat meat, and you can eat meat if you want to. God uh, cleansed it to be received with thanksgiving by them that believe and know the truth. That's from 1 Corinthians, or 1 Timothy rather, chapter 4. So then it's all right to eat meat. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Oh, but uh, there are certain false teachers uh, that would forbid that kind of thing. Now, that is exactly what we're talking about. Even in the church, over matters of indifference, uh, there are those who would bind their opinion on others. And that, of course, is always sinful. The Spirit saith expressly that in later times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons through the hypocrisy of men that speak lies, branded in their own conscience as with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from meats which God created to be received with thanksgiving for them that believe and know the truth. Uh, that's in First Timothy chapter 4, beginning at verse 1. But uh, false teachers, yes. Uh, somebody says, now these have got to be evil, ungodly, immo no, 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 no. Most of these people who teach error are basically good folk insofar as caring for their fellow man, insofar as sacrifice for the good of others. My well, friend, some of the finest people at all, good neighbor, what are they teaching? False doctrine, error. Oh, well, that will damn your soul. Oh, well, well, by the way, that's the only thing that's important is your eternal welfare. Now, I could give you all the food you need and all the clothing that you could wear, and I could provide you with a house to live in. I could, uh, I could be a real fine person, an excellent neighbor, but if you lose your soul, you miss the whole point. What did Jesus say? What shall a man be profited if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? So my responsibility is not to preach that which is agreeable uh, per se. No, no. My responsibility is to preach that which is authorized by the Lord. Keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. In those areas that are matters of indifference, why, friend, it's just like Paul said, if eating meat caused my brother to stumble, I'll eat no flesh forevermore. What is it? 1 Corinthians chapter 13, about to verse 8, somewhere. Check it out. Check it out. Oh, uh, Paul, eating meat is legitimate. Right. Oh, but you don't have to do it. Right. Well, if it's going to cause my brother to stumble, if it should cause one to lose his soul, oh, I'll do without it. I'll do without it. Well, but uh, why not, Paul, just bind your opinion on others? Say, hey, you, you, that's wrong. You, you can't do that. That is sinful. And that uh, is manifest in congregations of the Lord's church many, many times. We're divided over things that are matters of indifference, how to do this or how to do that, when the Lord has not specified it. He said, do it. Oh, then you can't make a law on how to do it. You can't bind the way you do it on other people. No, that's sinful. That's how you do it. Fine, just do it. Get it done. That's great. Uh, giving diligence to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Now, you're Paul. <clears throat> As he continues, he said, for there is one body, this what? There is one body. Now, we've noticed many, many times, Ephesians chapter 1, uh, 22 and 23, He hath put all things in subjection under His feet, gave Him to be head over all things to the church, which is His body, the fullness of Him that filleth all in all. The church is the body of Christ. Uh, that's correct. Colossians 1, 18. He is the head of the body of the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things He might have the preeminence. And in Colossians 1 at verse 24, for his body's sake, which is the church. The church is the body of Christ. Right. <clears throat> now, it's made up, of course, of many members, and we've learned that, and we've noted it many, many times. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning at verse 12, for as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of the body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For in one spirit were we all baptized into one body, whether Jew or Greek, whether bond or free, and were all made to drink of the one spirit. And he went on to explain the organizational aspects, the makeup of the body of Christ, using the physical body of man to do so. 
He said, uh, if the foot shall say, because I'm not the hand, I'm not of the body. Well, he said, it's not therefore not of the body. Or if the ear shall say, because I'm not the eye, I'm not of the body. Well, it's not therefore not of the body. If all were an eye, where were the hearing? If all were an ear, where were the smelling? Wait a minute. What is Paul saying? Individuals who, by faith, are baptized into Jesus Christ are added by the Lord to the community of the redeemed. That's called the ecclesia, translated church. Acts chapter 2, verse 47, the Lord added to the church daily such as were being saved. Yes, but these are varying, differing individuals who come from uh, different walks of life, who grew up under different circumstances, have different uh, values, and uh, why certainly, certainly. <clears throat> the unity that comes about does so through diligence on our part while we maintain the unity and the peace within the framework of the body. Now, I don't do with my hands the work of my feet. No, sir, it's out of the question. My hands can't do what my feet do, uh, nor can I perform with my ears the work of my eyes. What he's saying is that every member of the body is essential. Now, the body that Paul has under consideration in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it's the body of Christ, the spiritual body, the church, made up of individual human beings. That's correct each one having this talent or that, this capability or that, oh, that connection or this connection, uh, whatever the background may. Friends, the Lord can use all of us in His service. Well, but the only thing that makes men free is the truth, John 8, verse 32. So each member of the church functions for the good of the body as a whole. Well, somebody says, yes, but how could that be united? Oh, Christ is the head. Christ is the head of His body, the church. Well, just as my head directs the activity of every member of my body, just so Christ directs the attitude, the conduct of each member of His body, the church. Now, the, one of the problems for division within the rank and file of the Lord's church is ignorance. We simply do not read, study, uh, seek to apply the principles contained in the last will and testament of Jesus Christ. Friends, that is vital to the maintenance of the unity of the body of Christ. And yes, there are differences, and as we said in those matters of indifference, hey, we love one another because we are fellow members of the body of Christ. We are citizens in the government, the kingdom of God. Paul said, there is one body and one spirit. This is the spirit that animates the body. And we talk about the physical body of man. You remember that Jehovah God formed man of the dust of the earth, uh, Genesis 2, verse 7. Uh, there he lies, perfectly formed, but lifeless. Oh, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul, an immortal spirit. What animates, what activates uh, this old body, the Spirit. Uh, the same thing with regard to the body of Christ. The Holy Spirit, uh, the third person in the Godhead, uh, motivates, activates, directs, oversees, undergirds the activities of every member of the body of Christ. How does He do that? Through the written, revealed Word that contains all truth, that He enabled the apostles to record inerrantly. He inspired them in the direction of our understanding. He provided the truth. Oh, He then is the Spirit that animates the body of Christ. Right. And suppose I get away from this instruction. Well, we're going to have problems. I'm going to lose my soul if I do. Oh, but I'm going to create some problems within the rank and file of the Lord's church. Oh, but if we all ate regularly of the food for the soul, if we maintained our spiritual vigor through the ingestion of spiritual sustenance, ha, 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 we could maintain the unity of the body of Christ. Sure, even with all of our differences. Well, indeed, we're different people, as we said, from various uh, walks of life. Yes, but we've all dedicated our lives to the accomplishment of the will of God. Right. Oh, and the will of God is written down in this book. Friends, 
That's why it is so important. If we're going to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace, understanding there is one body and one Spirit, even as we were called in one hope of our calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all, through all, and in you all, it is so important that we give diligence to the understanding of the divine revelation through which we have access to heaven through the cleansing blood of Jesus Christ. It is so important that we labor, even as prisoners, as Paul was, if it be so, to maintain the unity of the Spirit, to give ourselves to the proclamation of the gospel of Christ. You are viewing Preaching the Gospel, a nationwide program brought to you by the Churches of Christ. They would love for you to come and visit their services. Why not come this next Lord's Day? Call us if you need assistance in locating a Church of Christ in your area. Maybe you'd like to have your own copy of today's lesson on audio cassette. We offer these free of charge. Write down the number of today's program and contact us by calling 1-800-683-3120 or email us at ptgwjw at aol.com. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 1484, Dalton, Georgia, 30722. Oftentimes, we get requests from those of you who want to learn more and study further about the Bible. We have available to you, free of charge, a series of eight Bible lessons. These lessons will be mailed to your home, and you can complete them on your own time and at your own pace. Let us know if you're interested in this, and we would be happy to begin mailing these lessons to you. Preaching the Gospel is under the oversight of the elders at the Highland Church of Christ in Dalton, Georgia. And now, back to James. Maintaining the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Oh, that has nothing to do with my material, physical circumstances. A commitment to Christ is not to be interrupted by the immediate material surroundings. If we aren't very, very careful, we let this whole world get in the way. Uh, this material existence is the opportunity for service to the Master, for reaching out to the lost, for exemplifying the eternal principles contained in this book. It is not of primary, lasting importance. Everything here will pass, but you and I will endure forever. So it is important that we maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace, in full awareness of the unity that should characterize the body of Christ, every member working for the good of every other member, or oh, that is, each member of the body functioning at the direction of the head for the good of the body as a whole. 